A warm welcome to the layman's channel where once again this week we are going to be uh, studying the topic of the army of God. Um, before we do anything else today I'd actually like to read the word so if you've got your Bibles with you uh, please turn with me to the book of 2nd Timothy and chapter 1 and we'll be reading from verse 1 to verse 7. Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that's in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience, as day and night I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I might be filled with joy. I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his mighty word. Uh, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word's power, that your word has the power to reach deep inside us, to split even between bone and marrow. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, that your word is a piercing sword. And I pray, Lord God, right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that as we look at your word, that you may use it like that, Lord God, that it may speak to our hearts and our spirits, Lord, that it may do and accomplish that for which it was sent. Father, I want to thank you that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And that, Lord God, that we can get understanding for the entrance of your word brings light and gives understanding. So help us, Lord God, as we look at this topic today once more. Lord, to understand the principles involved, that we may live them out in the world as we stand for you in these dark times. Once again, Father, I come before you and I ask that you would anoint my lips to enhance the kingdom of God as you promised. And also, Lord God, that you would, in Jesus' name, use me for your glory and flow through me as a conduit. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen and Amen. We are continuing our study into the topic of the army of God. In our last two studies we've looked at what an army is and what an army does and the top-down imposed discipline that sets the boundaries that the army must work within. We saw that if you break those boundaries then you can expect to be disciplined by the higher authority. In our case as Christians, our higher authority is God Almighty, who always disciplines us out of his deep and compassionate love for each of us. We also saw that if we welcome being disciplined by the Lord, then we understand that we are blessed and blessed indeed for our God who loves us is pointing the things out that need rectifying. At this time, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the subject of self-discipline. Self-discipline allows us to remain within the boundaries that God sets for us. Any army needs its soldiers to exercise self-discipline because the last thing it wants is for soldiers to go beyond the boundaries that the army has set for it because it could get very messy if they did. Also, self-discipline will enable a soldier to carry out the orders of their commanding officers in the way that those commanding officers have set them out. So let's look at what this means for us as Christians. Sometimes as Christians, we can get a little bit carried away with ourselves. I don't know if you've noticed that. <laughs> we get saved and suddenly we end up on this amazing emotional roller coaster. You know, sometimes we're up, 
Sometimes we're down. Sometimes we have days when we're just spinning around and around and around and around. Then we hear about the Holy Spirit and the power that the Holy Spirit can bring into a believer's life. So we get filled up with him and it's, look out devil, here I come. I've got my spiritual 44 Magnum and I'm coming to get you, punk. <laughs> the only trouble is we become loose cannons firing off spiritual weapons in all directions. Even when we hear a squeak or something on the top of the wardrobe, it's in the name of Jesus, be gone. There is no self-discipline to how we use the, the, the gifts that God has given us to use. There is just a point and shoot theory that gets a lot of people hurt, including eventually the one that's out of control. There is no maturity in the way that we use the weapons that God has graciously given us to use. We are immature, so we need self-discipline in order to help us use those weapons in a mature way, knowing when to use them and also why we must use them. Listen. God wants us to have and use spiritual power and the weapons that he has made available to each of us. But we need self-discipline to be effective in using them. In the verse that we already read in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, which says, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love and and self-discipline and if we have self-discipline then God is going to entrust us with his power but we must use it only when he says to a soldier is given a weapon so that he can use it when he is told to and not when he feels like it We've all seen those movies where the men are lined up, ready with their muskets or their rifles. And the commanding officer says, don't shoot until I tell you. And then he says, fire, and everybody fires at once. That's how it should be in the army of God too. When we hear that command from God saying shoot, then we shoot and not beforehand and certainly not afterwards because then it's going to be too late. So let's look at some of the reasons uh, why there is a need for us to exercise self-discipline. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 6, in my 1984 NIV, says, So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled or alert and self-disciplined. In the context of the scriptures that Paul is, is writing, he's talking here about the return of the Lord. In an earthly army, soldiers are prone to get surprise visits from their superior officers. So in other words, they better not be slobs in the way that they, 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 um, that they live. Everything in that inspection has to be correct and in order. The soldier's kit must be in the right place and hold all the right things in the right places. His weapon must be clean and his uniform must be clean and pressed and folded in the right way and put in the right drawer. His boots must shine like a mirror and his bed must be made properly. If anything is wrong, then that soldier must expect to be disciplined until he learns the self-discipline to do it correctly. Jesus said to his church in relation to his return to watch and pray for you do not know when that time will come. Mark 13, 33. 
And we are going to need self-discipline to enable us to wait for the Lord. For no one knows the time of his return except the Father. And we don't need to sweat the details if we continue to do the things he has asked us to do. The truth is, he, he is coming back. And having self-discipline will make sure we are doing the right things so that we are ready when he returns. Whether he returns tomorrow or whether he returns in another 50 years, it doesn't matter because we will still be doing the things that he asks us to do. In Matthew 24 verses 45 to 47 we read, Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. What keeps the servant doing the right things? Self-discipline. Self-discipline forms good habits and good habits produce in us a faithful and a fruitful lifestyle. And a faithful and a fruitful lifestyle will prepare us to get involved in the action. 1 Peter 1 verses 13 to 16 in the Amplified Version says, So prepare your minds for action. Be completely sober in mind, in spirit, steadfast, self-disciplined, spiritually and morally alert. Fix your hope completely on the grace of God that is coming to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Live as obedient children of God. Don't be conformed to the evil desires which governed you in your ignorance before you knew the requirements and transforming power of the good news regarding salvation. But like the Holy Spirit who called you, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. Be set apart from the world by your godly character and moral courage, because it is written, you shall be holy, set apart, for I am holy. Spiritual self-discipline enables us to not just prepare for war, it enables us to conform to Jesus and not to the world. It aids us in our struggles with temptation so that we can say no to them when they come and yes to Jesus. Self-discipline will also help us to pray. 1 Peter 4, 7 says, The end and culmination of all things is near. Therefore be sound-minded and self-controlled or self-disciplined for the purpose of prayer, staying balanced and focused on the things of God so that your communication will be clear, reasonable, specific and pleasing to him. I want to be as honest as I can be here because this is one area where I fail miserably. There are no excuses either. Even when something supposedly more important crops up or time runs out because I've other commitments. I find that there are lots of distractions that can draw me away from the house of prayer. And there are some Christians around the world who only ever pray when they need something from the Lord. I think that all of us need to be self-disciplined about prayer, because if we aren't, then we can easily succumb to the distractions of the enemy. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9 says, Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devils, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. We cannot stand firm against his attacks if we lack self-discipline regarding our own commitment to pray, 
our own commitments to study and our own commitments to fellowship. In the book of Daniel and chapter 6, we read the story of how Daniel was set up by jealous leaders who were upset that King Darius was going to set Daniel up to lead the whole kingdom. So they appealed to the king's ego and he agreed that the whole population were not to pray to any god except Darius himself on the pain of death. Now when Daniel heard this, it was obviously disturbing to him. But what did he do? Daniel carried on his normal routine as if nothing had changed. You see, Daniel had formed good habits, good habits that came out of self-discipline. He just had to pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Yaakov. Nothing was going to stop him from doing it and nothing was going to tear him away from doing what he always did even if it meant he died. The scripture said in Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10, now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed giving thanks to God just as he had done before. Nothing changed for Daniel. Nothing changed for him. He carried on regardless of the consequences. Because self-discipline had bred in him a faithfulness to pray. And because of that, God saved him out of the mouths of the ravenous lions. And then there's the story of Joseph, sold into slavery by his own brothers, ending up as the servant of Potiphar, who was the captain of Pharaoh's guard. Now Potiphar had a knocked down, drop dead, gorgeous wife, and she had her adulterous eyes set upon Joseph, who the scriptures say was well built and handsome. Day after day, she begged Joseph to sleep with her. And in Genesis 39, 10, we read that Joseph said he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. Joseph was self-disciplined enough and had the strength of character to stay away from the temptation, even though ultimately it got him into a great deal of trouble. Joseph did the right thing and because he did the right thing God vindicated him. Self-discipline kept him on the right path doing the right things in the right way and God got him out of trouble. So my brothers and sisters Learn to be self-disciplined and then we will all have the strength to say no to the world, no to the enemy's temptations and yes to God and the things that he wants for us. For he is our vindication and he will do it. He will pull us out of all sorts of situations if we remain faithful and self-disciplined in prayer and in seeking him, in study and in fellowship. Then we will become moulded by God to be good and effective soldiers in his army. I'll see you again next week. God bless you and let's say a big Amen.